GDP fine at 11 billion. Uh, the Department of Defense and Cybersecurity announces that they do plan to use appliances, they already are, to spy on you and your family. We are all designated enemies uh, under this system. That's how they claim to get around the Fourth Amendment. Uh, so we're going to be breaking all of that down coming up. Uh, but finishing that video, the chilling video, um, for radio listeners, you can go to Infowars.com and watch the video unedited with the cuss words. Uh, if you so desire, the police officers cussing so much that uh, a lot of the audio is choppy. Uh, but uh, they've released the video. The accident, uh, as they're calling it, took place. That's what Sputnik calls it. Uh, on December 30th of last year, but the video of the shooting was only just been released. The newly released footage shows two police officers, Brahim Days and Roger Worley, I think it's Brahim uh, that's doing all the screaming, pull over a car in the town of Bridgeton for allegedly not halting at a stop sign. And then the rest is uh, history. Uh, there's a gun in the glove compartment. And so the cop obviously gets agitated, says, don't move. The guy puts his hands up. And then the cop just starts yelling and screaming. Uh, he appears to follow his orders, and then he just shoots him. The other... Passenger, the driver, climbs out on the ground, on his belly on the ground, and doesn't get killed. But, I mean, we don't live in Fallujah, ladies and gentlemen. And this is the problem with having militarized police. I don't want to be pulled over, and they open my glove compartment, and there's a gun, and then the cop starts screaming and then just shoots me. I've almost been shot in the head by an Austin police officer 22 years ago, 23 years ago, almost 24 years ago. I'm about to be 41. And uh, I don't hate that officer. I understand he was scared of my weight belt, but I wasn't doing anything but speeding seven miles over the speed limit. And so it's something we got to talk about because these type of instances are up because of the training. And I want to illustrate again, this is a black cop doing this. I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I'm not saying he wanted to shoot this person. But it just doesn't sit right that this guy's dead. And okay, one of the guys had a record. Okay, whatever. That's not a death sentence. And I understand that it's a tough job. I don't want a police officer's job, especially in a bad area. It would be terrible. But if you are so scared that you're about to get killed that you're going to pull the trigger and shoot an unarmed person who isn't going for a gun, then I don't think you need to be a police officer. It's really that simple. Let's go ahead and play the entire unedited video. Here it is. They walk up on the car. He checks the license plate. Hey, how y'all doing? How you doing? Good. Hey, Officer Dave's Bristol Police. The reason I'm pulling you up, you went right through that stop sign back there. Where at? Uh, right, right on uh, South Pine Street. Uh, hey, you got a driver's license? Yeah, I got my driver's license. What's up, man? Man? Can you go ahead and grab for me? Uh, we stop. Right. Sign, we stop. We stop. No, no. Show me your hands. Show me your hands. Show me your hands. Don't move. Don't you move. Don't you move. Get yeah, he the opens car, the glove compartment, in this glove compartment. to get the move. license and registration, but there's a gun in there. Don't move. Show me your hands. Okay. Show me your hands. Don't you move. Don't you move. I'm going to shoot you. You're, you're going to be The other guy's got his hands up. The other guy had his hands up. How would you not panic having the cop put a gun to your head and say that? So he puts his hands up and comes out of the car, and the cop steps back and shoots him, panicking. I mean, I don't want to be pulled over by that hothead. I tell you, man, what a nut. Total liberal guaranteed. I was in the gym yesterday, and there was this woman going, I'm a conservative, but we've got too many guns, and they're so dangerous, and they're so scary. They need to be taken. And I just uh, put my headphones on and, and because she was on the elliptical next to me babbling. And 
10 minutes later, I took the headphones off to get off the elliptical to lift weights, and she was still babbling. And I've seen people that see a gun in the hands of a citizen, they freak out. In the hands of a cop, they think, oh, it's fine. This is the fear. That's why open carry and things like that are so important. Because then it desensitizes in a good way the public and everybody else to guns in the hands of good people. But I've watched the video. It's very clear. Uh, the guy had his hands up and was, you know, saying, come on, man, come on. And they just executed him. So the headline should be executed for running a stop sign in New Jersey. You now get the death penalty. You know, I don't know my crew's view on this because I watched this video this morning on Infowars.com. I came in, didn't ask them. Um, let's go to the control room here. This is unscripted, unannounced. They don't know who I'm going to. Let's go to um, whoever wants to pop in. It could be Nico. It could be a Joe. It could be uh, John Bound. Any of the folks in there, get a microphone. Give me your take uh, on this. Let's go to John Bound. John, you want to talk? Yeah, let's turn on John Bound's mic. We're going to get in the habit here uh, 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 of you guys coming on air a few times a day. Uh, Bound, uh, what's your take on this? Well, uh, as you said, it's blatantly like Fallujah in the streets of New Jersey. The streets of New Jersey are a very tough place to be, but uh, the guy is clearly getting out of the car. One cop shoots him in the back, the other cop shoots him in the front, and uh, as you said, it's uh, buck fever. Yeah, these guys would, would go deer hunting with you and would end up shooting the neighbor's cow. Yeah, or the barn, something like that, yeah. For the folks that don't hunt, I mean, you take some new hunters with you, this is what they do. Or they just get a gun in their hands and they start freaking out, uh, especially if they've never been around guns. I mean, I was shooting Folgers cans at age four with a 410 to teach me the power, then watermelons. Then I was taught not to touch guns unless I was authorized. And by, I'm not bragging, by age seven, I could shoot the top off of a Tabasco bottle at 200 yards with a three power uh, scope with a 243. Now, of course, I can't shoot like that. I don't want to digress, but I could shoot bullseye at 1,000 yards with a 308 Remington 700 by the time I was 14. Uh, but it's just for somebody immersed in gun culture, it's really hard to get my mind around um, northern policing, especially where they've killed the gun culture. That's where you see much of this going on. John, you were raised in Kentucky. Uh, were you immersed in the gun culture? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you don't have a choice in Kentucky, and uh, you're you learn how to use a gun. You you actually a gun is no different than a shovel. It's just a tool. It scares the animals away. It brings you food. Uh, people in Kentucky are generally not afraid of guns, but now we have this culture. Uh, there's a woman on Fox News the other day saying that we need to get rid of all semi-automatic weapons again. Uh, we, we need these guns because we have the police acting the way they are out there. If things escalate, then we'll be okay. Smith & Wesson's stock just shot up uh, yesterday. So people are, out, are arming themselves out there, the general public, which is uh, completely unrelated to the people that are in control because we are run by millionaires who are... Uh, in a VIP club who are disconnected from the reality. Well, I would of say Americans. 100 millionaires and billionaires, uh, if you look at the top Democrats, I mean, that's just a fact. The Democrats are the top pretty much 15 people in Congress worth billions or hundreds of millions individually. is truly outrageous. But I think a lot of people are getting guns, not so much for the police, but for the breakdown of society. And the media is using bad actions of the police like this to demonize police as a whole. That's the larger compendium of the manipulation. I, I noticed that Jakari came into the control room. I'm glad he's got something he wants to say. Uh, Jakari, what's your view on this? Well, with this shooting, it's pretty ridiculous to me because he pulls him over. He says, I want your license and your registration. So many people, they put their registration in their glove box. So a guy opens his glove box trying to retrieve the registration, and he happens to have a firearm in there, and the cop completely freaks out about it. You know, so what are you supposed to do, officer? Do you want me to get my registration or do you not? And then the officer's actions, you know, he completely freaks out. He's not able to keep a calm head, you know, put your hands up. And there's a, a point in the video where we can't really see so much what the uh, suspect is doing, but the officer's like, keep your hands up, keep your hands up. The guy exits the car and is shot multiple times for his efforts just trying to be a peaceful person. That's right. And I've had the case where I have a firearm in the glove compartment and I tell the police officer, 
okay, I'm going to get you my insurance and stuff, but there's a gun in there. Would you rather come around and do it? Mm -hmm. uh, and the cop just said, no, just do it slowly. But that's because I was so calm and relaxed right. uh, that it wasn't an issue. I, I mean, I get the fact it's nighttime. They're out there. Uh, one of the guys has a criminal record. On uh, It came out on the plate they ran. But they've got their hands up, and the guy just starts freaking out. The cop starts freaking out. And I've seen plenty of white cops do this on video and shoot a black guy or a white guy. Uh, and my sarcastic point was, unfortunately, they can't make a racial issue out of it because, you know, the cop initiating it's black. But the point is, it's not racial in my view in most cases. It is hysteria. This yeah, black I agree cop with that didn't shoot 100%. the black. It's, it's not a racial issue. It's just these guys, it's the training that they receive. It's this federalized training. It's these no hesitation targets and all the whole thing that goes along with that. They're just completely freaked out that anybody who has a gun, anybody who has a constitution, anybody who actually knows the law better than the officers do, they're just convinced that these people 